think neon for me when I first started using it was a sneaky way to make sculpture or think it three-dimensionally uh, rather than painting surfaces. Making neon was actually making objects and I, I sort of think they were a way for me to think about how you occupy space. But also how language can occupy space too. Um, that it's thingness, you know, in neon was really interesting to me. And there's certainly precedent of artists working with neon, Joseph Kasuv, Bruce Nauman. But somehow I didn't really think that it was something I did. The shop that I work with, like Bright Neon, I work with them almost 20 years now. They were in the bottom of the studio building that I am still in in Brooklyn. And one day I was walking by the shop and Matt Dilling, the founder, was there and he invited me in for a tour. And just as a joke, I said, you know, I make black and white text paintings, so is there black neon? And he said that black was the absence of light, so there was not black neon. Neon is the fifth most common element in the atmosphere, so we're breathing it in and out all day long. Um, and yet we never see that or perceive it. And to me there is this great nuance about what's visible and invisible, and that there is this aspect of neon where we're literally taking what's invisible and making it visible. And that mystery, that edge between the knowledge that can be retained and perceived through human consciousness and that part of that which is greater than us. To me, that's actually like the essence of spiritual practice or the essence of creativity. Neon is both this metaphor for this, but also this literal thing where we start with sand, we start with silica, we start with glass coming from that. And then we take the glass and we heat it up using fire. And then once it's been heated up with fire, we attach these electrodes and then we remove the carbon from the electrodes and leave this oxide that then when there's this inert gas introduced, it creates under a high voltage, this tremendously gorgeous spectrum of light. And there's this aspect of that that is so alchemical that is so literally primitive. I mean, these are all things that you can encounter in the natural world. Rainbows, lightning, fire, sand. And yet it's coming together in this way that is entirely based on industrialization, production of glass, refinement of atmosphere, um, development of vacuum technology human evolution, human craft, to being able to like take something, make tubing, bend tubing, perceive and understand how to remove and isolate elements of the atmosphere. He showed me a project that he had done for Burberries, where he reproduced their plaid in neon, and their plaid has a black stripe, and the way that they did the black stripe in neon was to paint a white tube of neon black on the front. And when he showed me that image, I realized there's black neon. <laughs> and so that's how I started. Uh, and I'd already been working on drawings that said Negro Sunshine based on the Gertrude Stein text. And I thought, well, this is a perfect translation of that text into neon. Um, eclipsed letters, as it were. One of the great things about working with artists is oftentimes they're approaching a medium from a different way, from like a fresh set of eyes. 
And in our practice, we really try and work on preserving and encouraging a beginner's mind from a fabricator's perspective, where we really want to look at like, what is this artist looking for? What are they saying? What are they bringing to this? What is at the edge of what they're interested in and how that edge meets with an edge that our studio is also at? And I think one of the things that's most interesting and exciting in working with artists over time, such as Glenn, is getting to learn how their process and practice evolves, as well as what matters to them and what is important. The thing that attracts me to neon is its handmadeness. You know, every neon that I make, somebody actually blew those letters, <laughs> bent those glass tubes, you know? It's all handmade, and that's super interesting to me as a process. It means within an addition of a neon, there are always variations, you know? Um, that's curious to me, and maybe more akin to how I work in the studio. Whatever your narrative around it is, it's a story, and it's a story that we hear in many different ways with many different understandings, oftentimes that exclude the real meaning of it or the real process of it. And Neon itself is this hand-produced, very refined, very technically challenging, um, it's a great mystery that we get to work with. This particular neon, uh, it's the word America, but some of the letters are crossed out, so what remains is the word me. Um, it's, it's new for me because I've never done neons that had this kind of crossing out before. Um, and it actually came because I was at my friend Patrick's house and he had a postcard I'd sent him many, many years ago that had a picture of one of my neons and I had done the same. I just crossed out letters of America with the magic marker until it spelled me. And I looked at that uh, and I'd probably done that 15 years ago. And I looked at the postcard and I thought, well, that could be a neon. A large part of what I think keeps the collaborative nature of what we do dynamic is this interest in trying to evolve our beginner's mind where we both learn the important concerns and cares of an artist, but we remain completely open to what that artist might be looking to do that's new, that's fresh, or that's something they're not even conscious of yet, and neither are we. So a good sort of collaborator, a good fabricator is somebody who can suggest things that you can accept or reject, but suggest things that kind of go in line with what you want to do, you know, or what you might want to do. Because at the point where we first met, I hadn't worked on Dion at all. It wasn't something I did. Uh, and so suddenly that possibility was there. So. Um, and Matt's made every neon that I've ever done. So this has been almost a 20 year kind of collaboration around thinking through the possibilities of neon as artworks. People are like, neon is so 1960s, neon is so 1980s, neon is so this, neon is so that. And really at the end of the day, what I have come to understand is that neon is very evocative and really leads people into a narrative. One of the things I'm interested about this crossing out at this moment is one that I haven't done that before in Neon, though uh, crossing out or making things more abstract has certainly been long part of my work, working process. Uh, to cross out the word America so that you're just left with the word me seems to be the moment that we're at as a culture. Well, I can say America is always in a narcissistic phase, but we're in a particularly narcissistic phase, a uh, self-interested phase, a kind of me against the world phase. And so maybe in some ways the new neon is responding to that. Um, but I think, you know, to use the word America, it's such a loaded word anyway, you know. 
what does it mean? Who's included in that America? Uh, who's the me <laughs> that's being brought out when you cross out the words America? Uh, I don't know if that me is me, the artist. Um, so I'm interested in those kinds of readings, but I'm also interested in this word as material. Uh, the way you know, a painter uses paint as paint as a material, language is a material, neon's a material. So I'm interested in playing with that word as material. So to cross it out, to invert it, to put it upside down, to make it blink off and on obnoxiously. That's all a way of playing with this word that we think we know what it means, but is also something always in process, always something that has to be kind of reinvented and played with, um, interrogated in some ways.